Gershom Shalom, uh, obviously there, there's the Gershom Shalom collection. When did he start amassing um, collection of, of Jewish mystical Hasidic or Kabbalic books? How was that whole process of getting this whole amazing collection together? Well, really was a lifelong pro process. But the amazing thing about Shalom is that once he kind of decided what he wanted to do, he set out to do it with incredible rigor and and uh, and systematic work. And that includes building his library. As soon as he decided that he wanted to go into a career in Jewish studies, which was after he, he left mathematics, which is, was his original field, he uh, decided that he's going to devote his life to studying the Kabbalah. And he decided that in order to do that, you had to build the complete Kabbalah library, more or less, or the Jewish mystical library, based on the definitions that he gave gave to that, being the first academician to really devote himself fully to the topic. And he went around, he went from bookstore to bookstore in Berlin, uh, buying books. He writes in his autobiography, From Berlin to Jerusalem, that he would sometimes skip meals to buy books, or he would eat uh, really cheap uh, uh, food in lousy restaurants to save money for buying books. And he, um, and it was also was the time in post World War One, uh, with all the hyperinflation in Germany, so you could buy books very relatively cheaply. And he, but he was very systematic about it. He started uh, collecting book dealer catalogs and marking down very, very. Uh, carefully what books he had, what books he didn't have, what books he should get. And he, he kept very careful uh, records of all these things, where he bought books, how much he paid for them, uh, etc. When he made Aliyah in 1923, as a 26-year-old, he already brought with him over 1,700 books, including uh, over 600 in Kabbalah and Hasidut. And with, of course, with a, as a good yaki, as a good detailed German Jew with a, a special notebook listing every book by topic and where he bought it, how much he paid for it, you know, which edition it was, etc. And um, he also, by the way, I should mention, even before before he made Aliyah as a very young man, he already decided that after he would die, that his collection should become part of the National Library in Israel and become the basis of a uh, center for the study of Kabbalah, which is what happened. So he really... Uh, so uh, really looked ahead at these things. Once he made Aliyah, he started hitting all the bookstores in Mea Sharim, which was near his home. And he also corresponded with people in Europe to send him books, both with book dealers and with, um, he had his mother buying books for him. There's one correspondence where she writes to him, I have nightmares of you drowning in a sea of Kabbalistic manuscripts. And he responds to her, okay, mom, but where's the book on alchemy that you were supposed to send me? So he really spent his entire life um, collecting books, cataloging them for himself, arranging them. And that was how he felt that he could do his proper historical philological work to, be able to open up all the editions of a, of a book and compare them, etc. Now, in addition to that, you need manuscripts. And he, he could never afford manuscripts, of course, for himself. But he did two things. He convinced um, Magnus, who was the first president of the Hebrew University, to devote a significant amount of, uh, of the university's budget to purchasing Hebrew manuscripts. And he also, Sholem and him, himself and his students, when they were traveling, would go to various libraries and make photocopies of, of the Jewish manuscripts that they found there. And there's a, a very big uh, part of the collection that we have now are hundreds of photocopies of Kabbalistic manuscripts that were made by Shalom and his students. This was really a lifelong uh, devotion and done with tremendous uh, care and precision, and the results are uh, are really astounding. So when he died in in uh, 1982, we received uh, over approximately 25,000 books from his library, including thousands of rare books. And now, of course, the collection has grown quite a bit because it's a living uh, research center. But uh, the core remains the books uh, that were in Shalom's small apartment in, uh, in Yerushalayim.